Is this the most important Bengals preseason of all time? Let's talk about it. What's up, Hootay Nation? It's the 513 with your boy J.E. on the Winsonetti Podcast. Happy Monday. Hope everybody's having a fantastic day. I wanted to, to check back in with you guys. We had some football last week. We got to watch the Jaguars versus uh, Oakland. And, uh, I mean, an uneventful game nonetheless. But uh, I think they did have record numbers on the viewership. And uh, we got to see some young players that, you know, from those teams that might be uh, pretty good coming into the season. So football is back. Uh, right now we're in the preseason. And I wanted to talk about the Bengals preseason that's coming up because I think it's a good question to ask, right? Is this the most anticipated or most important preseason, uh, you know, for the Bengals coming up right here in front of us? And... When you, when you look at it, people might think it's an outrageous question, but here's a reality, right? I guess before I even get into that, preseason in general is very important for a couple of reasons, right? First reason being is GMs, coaches have to evaluate talent. They have to look at these players, see them in live game action, make cuts, and decide ultimately who's going to be on the 53-man roster. Right. That that's you know, that's another it's a very, very, very important part um, for the Bengals. The Bengals have a few positions, I feel like, especially a defensive end where they have some guys that, you know, look, they have a lot of guys in that room. Um, that's one of the positions where they might have to cut a guy, um, you know, just because. Right. They, they have a lot of players in that room. They might have to cut a guy. This preseason is very important for those for that position. Um, but nonetheless, right, preseason is very important. There have been a ton of guys um, that were undrafted free agents that, look, they got the opportunity in preseason, they showed flashes, and they got the opportunity in the game. Um, just, you know, just looking at it, right, <laughs> guys that – Guys that you may not know were undrafted that probably turned out to be great players like Jason Peters, Andrew Norwell, Adam Thielen, Chris Harris, Austin Eckler, Land, uh, uh, Liddell Collin, Lyle Collins, I'm sorry, uh, Alejandro Villanueva, and then Mario Addison, right? Um, I'll even go back, Wes, uh, Wes Welker, John Randall. Drew Pearson, these are all guys that were undrafted. Um, if that, you know, some of the, if, if maybe I mentioned someone that wasn't undrafted, then I, I got my list wrong, wrong. I got it mixed up. But from my recollection, those guys were undrafted free agents who needed preseason to make a roster, to have the opportunity to start. Anytime you're talking about preseason, think of it like a scrimmage, right? We're probably not going to see a lot of the starters, but – is going to be an opportunity, as I said before, for GMs, coaches to evaluate talent, look at the people who are on the field, um, see if they fit with the team uh, in actual game situation, if they can count on those players, and decide, hey, look, we're going to add it to the 53, we're going to put you on the practice squad, or unfortunately we're going to have to cut you. We know the NFL is a cutthroat business, and uh, quite frankly, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog road out there in the NFL. And um, – this preseason, to me, for the Bengals, is the most important one of all time. <laughs> and I say that because they're coming off of a Super Bowl appearance, and it's the only preseason that matters right now at this very second. Every preseason that ha has happened before today or before this preseason actually does not matter at all. It has no bearing on the Cincinnati Bengals, and it's not going to impact the season. So, I don't think it's outrageous to say that this is the most important preseason. And I think there's really a lot of reasons that fans should be watching these games, paying close attention for the football junkies out there, which I know a lot of us tuned in to Jaguars versus Oakland, which we probably really all dreaded in the beginning, but we ended up watching the entire game anyway. 
Um, the Bengals have some very interesting position battles to me from a depth perspective, right? First and foremost, don't expect to see all the starters, right? If a, if a guy is 100% the number one starter um, on the roster, I wouldn't expect to see him. Um, I'll just throw this out there. Uh, I, Alex Kappa. I know he's coming back off of an injury. I think he's had some limited reps in, in camp in general. I don't expect Alex Kappa to be full go or, or play in the uh, in the preseason game versus the Cardinals this Friday. Um, we know Lyle Collins isn't playing. We know T. Higgins isn't playing. I don't expect Jamar Chase to really play. If he does, maybe one one or two, uh, maybe one or two snaps, maybe a, a series, four plays. Uh, I don't really expect Tyler Boyd to play, but he could get a series. Um, Hayden Hurst, I'm not really sure if he'll get a chance to play. I, I, I don't know if Hayden Hurst will play just because we got the injury to Drew Sample, which they might need Hayden Hurst to play. But then again, they have some depth there at tight end, and uh, they might just might have an opportunity for those guys to get more snaps. So don't expect to see much of the first team, especially in that first preseason game, just because – the first preseason game is really about evaluating the depth of your roster, looking at guys that are in the three to four deep into two deep, which second, third, fourth on the roster is what I mean when I say that, to see if they can actually fit within the team or have an impact either on special teams or as depth on the roster. So that's what, you know, that's probably what you're going to see. Don't expect to see the starters there. But when you're looking at this, um, I think there's guys that could potentially be future starters, right? Uh, within this, you know, this first preseason game, and the first group that I, I I think is very important for the Bengals to evaluate this upcoming preseason game versus the Cardinals on Friday is the defensive backs, right? That was one group that uh, Zach Taylor said he was very impressed with at camp. They've been consistent all throughout camp, and I think you know. I think part of that is that the, the defensive backs have improved. I also think part of it is that uh, Joe Burrow has not had a chance to play against the DBs in, in camp. So I think they've kind of – look, I'm not saying that's taken away from what they're they're doing, right, but the level of competition and quarterback play uh, from Joe Burrow to Brandon Allen, it is a drop-off there. So uh, that's just the facts there. Uh, I think they definitely have improved. I think we improved from a speed perspective. But I think the DBs are one of the most interesting groups to watch, right? You got CTB, Cam Taylor Britt, who's running with the twos at corner. Uh, there were some reports out there, I think, from a couple media outlets for the Bengals that he was had some struggles an in individual. Uh, but I think the previous day he had a good day, and I think today he had a good day as well, too. So these game reps for him are um, invaluable. The opportunity for Cam Taylor Britt to have some – game live snaps in an NFL game, uh, you know, as a, as a number two corner, it's invaluable. And quite frankly, being able to have success in a preseason game for him could go a long way because he's in a position battle. And uh, look, maybe he doesn't beat Eli Apple out this season for the job, but maybe he demonstrates that he does have the ability to, you know, play in a game full speed, play in an NFL game, have success, execute the scheme to the T and what Lou Anarumo is asking of him and uh, display his athleticism. Right. So I think Cam Taylor Britt's an interesting guy to watch. Uh, he can make some big headway in this in this preseason game and every preseason game. He can make big, head, big headway. We'll talk about those as, as we go and get to those. But. This game in particular is going to be a good, a good, good opportunity for Cam and uh, really excited to see him. Uh, some other defensive backs that I think we can pay close attention to is um, Tyson and Tyson Anderson, right? Safety out of Toledo. Uh, I know he's been working at free safety, I think. Uh, and uh, he's going to be a guy that is very interesting to watch. There wasn't a lot of film out there on Tyson. You had to literally go on YouTube, watch Toledo versus Eastern Michigan or Toledo versus Kent State and watch the entire game and uh, fast forward to the defensive side of the ball because there was limited film out there on him. But what we do know is that he ran fast. Uh, I watched some of his clips. He he plays very well. 
and uh, he's a good safety. He's rangy. He has uh, elite speed, and uh, he has a good size as well, too. So Tyson's a guy that I think, hey, look, I don't think there's any question that he makes the roster, but I think the impact that he will have on the season is going to be based on how he performs, you know, this uh, this preseason, right? He'll probably have some some special teams opportunities on kickoff or kick return or something like that, but uh, this is an opportunity for him to play safety in a game, and for coach to see him and, and coach him up and you know get live game tape of him in an NFL um, in an NFL defense versus an NFL offense. And I don't know who the second quarterback is for the uh, for the Cardinals, but nonetheless, right? It's it's very important to see Tyson Anderson live in action to see what he can bring to this team. Uh, camp is one thing. Practice is one thing. Uh, you know, it, it's always nice to see people flash in practice, but there really is, you know, people who are practice all stars per se. But then when they go in a game, they can't put it together. Right. Um, that's something that you know, a lot of guys not knocking, not knocking people, but that's something that a lot of people, a lot of players really have issues with. Right. Being, being able to make the big plays in practice. But then in a game, sometimes the moment is too big or maybe lack of focus, and uh, they miss out on some of those opportunities. So Tyson Anderson's a guy that I'll be paying attention to. Another guy who is an uh, undrafted free agent out of Vanderbilt, Alan George, right? A cornerback who uh, we saw that he was running with the ones this week when Eli Apple was out, and uh, it caught a lot of people by surprise. Um, quite frankly, I don't know much about Allen. I had to do some research on him. I had to go look him up. <laughs> I checked to see if he was the captain at Vandy. He wasn't, but, uh, there were some pretty good things out there about him. And, uh, I, I think he's a decent sized corner who it'll be interesting to see how he plays in the preseason game. I think he'll get a ton of snaps. And uh, if he ran with the ones in practice, that's telling me that maybe Lou Anarumo was seeing something in him that has he has displayed that you know he could be an asset to this team. So uh, Alan George is a guy I'll be looking out for. He's a cornerback out of out of Vandy, and uh, you know last but not least maybe Dax. I don't expect Dax to play a, a lot if he does have an opportunity to play. Maybe he plays the whole first quarter. I don't know. Uh, that'd be in my opinion. That'd be awesome to see him play an entire first quarter, get him as many reps as possible. He's taken, you know, I ideology, I mean, realistically, uh, or in theory, he's taken Jesse Bates' role, right? And uh, I know there has been some chatter about, you know, him and Von Bell rotating, playing the, you know, the the middle, middle third safety or single high safety. Uh, and then they've had Dax in the box as a linebacker at times. So, you know, Dax is really in a unique spot to me. And uh, in the sense that elite athlete, elite player, uh, contributed to a great defense last year at Michigan. But the reality is that he needs as many reps as possible to get ready for the NFL. So I don't know if we'll see him in, uh, in the game this Friday, but it'll be interesting to see if they if they do give him snaps. And if they do give him snaps, that's a guy that you need to pay attention to. See how he moves. See how he plays in coverage. See if his instincts are there. See how he tackles. We know Dax is a great tackler, but will it translate to the NFL? So uh, that'll be something good to pay attention to. That'll be great to watch. Uh, and uh, from you know from the DBs, that's kind of who that's who I have my eye on. There might be a guy or two I'm uh, you know missing or leaving off the list, which. Doesn't mean that I don't think they're special, but like I said, you know, you're probably not going to see the starters. I don't expect to see Eli or Cheeto Bay Wuzie, but I do expect to see those other guys. And uh, I expect for maybe Alan George, Cam Taylor, Britt to get a ton of snaps, and then uh, the other guys behind them to get opportunities as well too. So um, that's kind of for the DBs. Another really uh, important thing to be looking out for is the special teams kicking game battle between the punters. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's going to be something to watch to see how, you know, see how the, uh, you know, the rival to Huber is punting the ball, punting the ball. Uh, if he's really hitting it good, really see how Huber's hitting it too, right? I mean, 
We saw last season how Huber sometimes looked like he lacked power in his leg when kicking the ball, and uh, we know how critical the kicking game is. We know how critical it is to pinning the offense, the rival offense down, you know, deep in their own territory and also changing the field position. So um, that'll be very interesting to watch. Um, I think Drew Chrisman versus, um, you know, Kyle Huber. And uh, quite frankly, Kevin Huber, I said Kyle, Kevin Huber. <laughs> and uh, it, it's going to be very important to see how the, you know, how these two battle and really see, hey, look, is there a significant difference to what Drew Christman is bringing to the table versus what Kevin Huber is bringing to the table? And then I think the coaches will kind of decide from there. I think that is a, a real life battle. And I, I think there is a chance that Kevin, you know, he really could be pushed. So um, that'll be something to watch. Very, very interesting battle there. Uh, the tight ends, no Drew Sample, right? He got hurt. Um, dodged the bullet, so he didn't tear ACL or anything like that, but they expect him back in two weeks or so. So the guys behind Drew Sample, right, those guys, they're going to have an opportunity. We know Hayden Hurst is there, the number one tight end. I don't know really if I really expect to see Hayden much. Uh, maybe he will get some snaps to kind of get uh, acclimated to that offense, but um, in reality, you know, we're going to see Thaddeus Moss. Um, I think they signed a kid from Kentucky as well, too. I don't have the Bengals tight end, you know, roster in front of me, but I know Thad Moss is there. I know they signed a kid from Kentucky. I think they have another kid who was a receiver in college, but he's transitioning and playing tight end. So they have a couple guys or three guys I think that'll be battling for the in the tight end room for the, in the preseason game. I don't expect to see Hayden Hurst much. Um, and I, I think it's a good opportunity for Thad. You know, Thad Moss, again, I know Thad Moss isn't the most explosive or, you know, big tight end that people want to see on their team. That is a, just a crazy mismatch like a Gronk or a, um, a Gronk or Travis Kelsey. It, you know, it, he doesn't create that kind of mismatch and he isn't that kind of athlete, right? But, we know the chemistry with Joe and Thad Moss is there. And I think for him, it'll just be, you know, interesting and exciting to see him get an opportunity to have some snaps to play real football again, uh, to get on the field. Uh, just because, look, that Moss was hurt last season. He got hurt with the Red, uh, the commanders, I think, when he first joined the team. Then he got cut. Then we picked him up. And I think he got hurt as well, too. So he never really got an opportunity to, I think, touch the field in a game for us. But – uh, that said, it'll be cool to see him out there and see what he can do um, to see. Maybe, look, I don't know, but maybe he's a guy who surprises and uh, maybe he's one of the guys that were undrafted free agents and turns out to be a success story. So, I mean, for Pete's sake, the kid is Randy Moss's son. So, <laughs> I mean, give him an opportunity. Let's see if he has any of uh, some special some special sauce or, you know, Randy Moss sauce or Randy Moss juice in his genetics that he might be able to bring to the team. So um, that's, you know, that's a group to pay attention to the tight ends there. And then I think the offensive line, the depth, uh, that's how they play. I don't expect to see Ted Karras. I don't accept, expect to see Alex Kappa. I know we won't see Lyle Collins, but uh, the guys behind those folks, and again, Dante Smith, Deontay Smith got hurt, so he won't be playing, but uh, identity. But I really want to see Volson. Um, I, I think we'll have a chance to see Carmen because he's in a position battle. I think that's clear as day. Uh, so I think Carmen and Volson are probably the two offensive linemen at guard that we'll be watching. And um, it's going to be a good position battle to watch. That guard position is probably the most important position right now on the offensive line to me because it's a question mark. And anytime you have a question mark, you need to get those questions answered. So, um, you know, that's a, you know, that's a position I'm watching and just paying attention to to see, hey, look, how do they perform in the game? You're not evaluating the entire offensive line as a unit, so it's not an opportunity to overreact because, look, it's not the first team offensive line. It's, you know, we, we saw the offensive line last season and it did improve. Despite not being good enough, it did improve. And I expect this group to improve as well, too. But I think from an individual basis, we have to look at this, you know, in the preseason game at an individual level. Uh, did a Dinagy improve? 
is Adeniji going to be able to play right tackle? Because initially, initially he was brought in to play tackle, and uh, he was able to kind of be a you know he was able to kind of you know play a couple different positions, play guard and tackle. Ended up playing guard for us to where he, I don't think he was strong enough to play inside. And uh, the Bengals need to find out, hey, can this guy play tackle and even have success in this league? So, um, you know, that's something that they're going to be looking at in identity. And then let's look at Cordell Volson out of North Dakota State. Uh, can Cordell play at this level, at a very high level in the pass game and run game? Uh, we know NDSU, North Dakota State University, they're a run team. Um, and we know that he was good in the run. And uh, we know he's a lunch pail guy. He brings his lunch pail to work, and he works hard, and his goal is to outwork everybody. But we need to see it translate to the field and see if he can either, you know, challenge Jackson Carmen for the spot or be 1A, 1B backup if Carmen goes down for any reason or another, right? Um, and then last but not least, the defensive line depth, right? We talked about the defensive line depth. Uh, I mean, geez. When you look at this team, uh, as far as the defensive linemen, from a team that really I felt like last season we were kind of depleted from a defensive line perspective due to injuries and things like that, this is an opportunity, I think, you know, this preseason in particular, that they have some young talent on the roster that are in key position battles that we're really going to have an opportunity to see how they perform. Jeffrey Gunter, Wyatt Huber, um, we'll see if Joseph Osai gets snaps. I mean, geez, last season, Joseph Asai tore his ACL in a preseason game, so I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't play. Uh, but he's a guy that could have an opportunity there. Uh, we'll get, we're going to see Zachary Carter interior defensive line, but I think he can also play some edges well too. Cameron Sample, uh, he'll have an opportunity, I think, to play as well too. So uh, right there off the bat, right, that those are that's five guys. I'm not even listing the entire – um, group that's probably going to play this, you know, this coming week. But um, nonetheless, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's going to be a dogfight between that and that group, and it's going to be a dogfight. There's going to be NFL teams watching to see who the Bengals decide to cut or place on the practice squad because the Bengals have talent at that position, and um, you know, I I don't think the names there are as proven as maybe some guys across the league outside of Trey Hendrickson, DJ Reader, and Sam Hubbard. But I think there's young talent in that room that will eventually end up having a high impact next season and probably making a few game-winning plays. So very excited to watch that group. This preseason, you know, versus the Cardinals, uh, the Bengals versus the Cardinals on Friday, the first preseason game of the year. Uh, for the Cincinnati Bengals, I'm uber excited. You know, get ready to watch the game, get your scouting reports out, you know, pay attention to your favorite position groups or favorite players. You know, don't get locked so much in on the scheme and the production of the product that's on the field. It's more about finding out who's going to fit on this roster and who's going to help make a contribution, you know, to the re in the regular season, who's going to make the 53. This is the most important preseason of all time because it's the most <laughs> current preseason right now and the only preseason that is going to have a direct impact on the Bengals' season this year. So appreciate you all watching. A big hoot out there. Enjoy the week. Cannot wait to watch the Bengals play the Cardinals this coming Friday. Have a good Monday.